Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into today's topic, talking about Tottenham Hotspur, go down if you're enjoying the content and drop a like on the video. I want to try and see how many likes we can hit this video. The support has been absolutely unreal at over 100 subs yesterday. And we're close to 18K now, 480 subs away. Big up to every single person. We're going to talk about it. Palace 1, Tottenham Hotspur 2. A game of two halves. Um, the stats say we were very dominant other than shots on target. But what was the real story? Now, um, when you look at the lineup we played, um, it was basically as expected, just where everyone thought that your doggy would play. But then um, he picked up a little knock after the Fulham game, which was only four days ago, four or five days ago now. Um, and we proved we can play two games in five days and we've got past both of these obstacles. So, um, Vicario, Davis, Van de Ven, Romero, Porro, Saar, Bissouma, Kulu, Richarlison, Madison and Son. Goals coming from Son and an own goal from Ward. Um, the, the, the the three po talking points I want to talk about. Uh, the first one I want to talk about, Ben Davis. Ben Davis cannot play this role as an inverted fullback in an Ange Postacoglu system. He cannot play this role. Let's just let's just get it out there now. He can't. He doesn't have, in my opinion, he's not technically good enough. His first touch isn't good enough. Um, his passing ability, his defensive ability are not good enough. His pace is not, he's nowhere near the level of pace we need to get up and down. You look at the difference between him and your doggy. A doggy can get up and down, up and down, and he's got a real engine on him, whereas Davis doesn't. Um and I think that would be a problem if we got a long-term injury to the likes of your doggy, because I don't think Session can really do it either. He's a little bit more quick than Davis, but they're both not at the level, in my opinion. The second glaring point is this guy right here, who I'm hovering my mouse over, Richarlison. He is not at the level. Let's just be not beat around a bush. Let's just move on. Move him on. Um his first touch yesterday, it was like the guy was walking around with Timberland boots on. You know, the ball was bouncing off continuously. He passed the ball out of play, I think, three or four times. He gave the ball away 17 times in the first half, which has got to be a record for him. Um, and not in a good way. Just not good enough for me. Um, poor. Just poor. And it's no coincidence when Brendan Johnson come on, we, we, got, a, we got a very good goal. Very, very good team goal. Um, and the last point is we need to pay some respect to the three at the back, Vicario, Romero, and Van der Ven. Vicario this season, I know we've spoken about who's the best signing. You know, is it is it Van der Ven? Is it Madison? We need to put more respect on Vicario. When you look across the new goalkeepers that have come to new teams in the league, the likes of Sanchez at Chelsea, the likes of Onana at Man United, the likes of Raya at Arsenal. Um, we have, you know, absolutely got a gem in Vicario. The highest save percentage in the Premier League. I think it's 83.6%. Uh, someone said to me yesterday, we've only conceded nine goals in 10 games. Got the highest goal difference in the Premier League at the moment. Only Arsenal, Manchester City have conceded less goals than us. We're joined on the same amount of goals conceded as Liverpool and Newcastle when they've still got to play. Um, we, we need to put some respect on this guy's name. He has been absolutely incredible. And for 15 million quid, what a signing that is. I'll, I'll hold my hands up. I was very critical. I wanted David Raya. A lot of people wanted David Raya, but we have got an absolute gem in Vicario. Yesterday, Van der Ven and Romero, once again, absolutely brilliant. So, so, so good as a pairing they are. They complement each other. You've got the the lovely touch on the ball, the elegant movement and, and, and the pace of a Van der Ven. And you've got the destroyer who wants to get stuck in and do slide tackles like Romero. And yesterday, they were both very, very, very good. I am yet to see a player beat Van der Ven for pace. You know, there was a there was a time on Monday night where Van der Ven was up against Vinicius, our old striker, the Fulham striker, and he just gave up because he's like, yeah, I'm not getting to that ball. Um and Van der Ven, you know, was good yesterday, as well as Romero. Um, when you look at the the shots, uh, we had 10 shots, which is our lowest this season. 
Um, and as the first half collectively, I don't think we were that good. Um, I think we were second to every ball. It was quite concerning. Um, you know, Palace did a job on us. They made it tough to get past. They're a good defensive unit. The likes of Decore sitting in front of Gay here and Anderson is a very good unit for them. Mitchell's a good fullback. And Palace were, were, were without big players yesterday. No Elise, no Eze. Um, for them, uh, Edward went off and they brought on Mateta. They just haven't got any firepower from us. 76% possession in an away game in the Premier League is absolutely incredible. 732 passes with a pass accuracy of 91% is absolutely incredible too. 10 shots, not a high amount. Normally we average between 15 and 20. Um, only one shot on target, which is a little bit concerning. Um, the best thing about, uh, I think Ange Postacoglu got the game spot on. He got the game absolutely spot on with every single one of his substitutions. I thought he made them at the right time. You know, the first substitution was at halftime. We brought on uh, Emerson Royale for Ben Davis, which for me was the right decision to make because um, Royale, I think, is a better engine and I think he's a better defender than Ben Davis um, and he can get up and down. Uh, the first goal comes from um, a, bit, a run from Saar, plays in Madison. Madison drills it into a dangerous area and it gets deflected off Joel Ward. And how many times now has Madison picked the lock in these games, in these low blocks? He did it against Bournemouth. He did it against Luton. Did it against Fulham. And he's done it again today. We need to put some respect on James Madison's name. An absolute player. One of the signings of the window, in my opinion, the signing of the window. Ten games played, three goals, five assists. I'm not sure why yesterday's assist didn't count. Um, I think it should have counted uh, his assist. Uh, no, for some reason it didn't count. Um, you know, just a majestic player. Puts the ball in a dangerous area. Did the same thing against Luton. Van der Ven got on the end of it there. Um, and then, you know, that was probably the perfect time. Um, Foster Coglu then made a second change, which I thought was at the perfect time, which was bringing on Hoiberg for Basuma. I don't think it was Basuma's best game. And we've got to give some props to Hoiberg because, do you know what? Hoiberg has been very, very good under Ange. I thought he was good against Fulham. Some good passing, a couple of good tackles. Had a bit of a silly yellow card, but I thought it was very good yesterday. And he's one of the one of our better players coming off the bench when it comes to managing out games. You know, he's coming against Fulham, helped us manage it out. He's coming against Luton, helped us manage it out. And he's he, I, there's a there's a debate now. Do we need to sell Hoiberg in January? That That's a question on a few people's mind right now. You know, do you could you potentially bring in another midfielder? Because now you think Hoiberg's down to fifth fifth choice. He's not going to get in over Basuma, Saar, Bentoncourt, Madison, you know, Skip. Does he start over any of those? I'm not so sure. So are we going to sign another player who is happy to come off the bench and just do his job and do his job to a high standard, you know? I thought yesterday he was good. Let's not beat around the bush. I thought yesterday he was he, he was very good. He got a lot of things. He got a lot of things right. Um, a lot of people said yesterday they see signs of Tottenham being a bit fragile. Um, I just think you know we, we're struggling at times to break down a low block. Um, but every challenge that has come up against us so far in terms of a low block: Burnley, Fulham, Brentford, you know, Luton. Sheffield United, Palace, we've overcome, you know, every, every single obstacle so far. And the second goal, um, you know, Madison plays the ball back in. Brennan Johnson continues his run, puts it on a plate for Sonny, who gets his eighth goal in 10 games. You know, we, this guy has stepped up for us massively. He's taken the armband. He's taken the responsibility. No Harry Kane now. Big shoes to fill. He's come in and he's he scored in in a big big games for us. You know he scored against Arsenal, scored against Burnley, scored against Fulham, scored against um, you know Palace, and now we got a game against Chelsea on Monday night, and they've just lost two 0 to Brentford at home. I think we will beat Chelsea. I'm going to say it right now, and that would be 
if we were to beat Chelsea, that would be nine wins out of our first 11 games, which is absolutely incredible. And then after that, we've got Wolves away. And then we've got the big one, which is Aston Villa um, and then Manchester City, which are two very tough games. But I think we'll win our next two. You know, I said at Fulham, I expect to win the next five. Manchester City is going to be tough. And so far, we've won our first two. Chelsea will be tough under the lights Monday night at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But, you know, I think we'll do them. And then Palace get that goal um, from Ayu. OK, whether it was a handball or not, take nothing away from that finish. That finish from, from Jordan Ayu is sublime. Is top, top level finish, that is. Unbelievable. Um, and, you know, there was a little bit of a wobble at the end, but we managed the game out. It's another win um, for us now. That's four Premier League wins on the bounce, beating Liverpool, Luton, Fulham, Palace. Four clean sheets out of our first 10 games. Eight wins, two draws, zero losses. 26 points for our opening 10 games. And currently, right now, we are top of the league, you know? We're, we're in the best form in the Premier League. No no team in the league has won their last four. Um, so we need to give props to Postacoglu. He got all of his substitutions right yesterday. Bringing on Johnson at the right time was perfect. Bringing on Hoiberg at the right time was perfect. Bringing on Royale, you know, it was great to see Benson Core back. In the little five or ten minutes he played, you saw glimpses of what we're yet to what we're gonna see in the Postacol glue side. I don't think we should slot him straight back in. I do think he needs to earn his place. Um, and we're going into Chelsea with a fully strength squad with no injuries, and which is which is absolutely incredible, you know. And we've got two, four, six, eight, ten games now between now and January. If you look at teams around us, the likes of Manchester City have got to play. Uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 games. They've got everyone else, all the European teams, Brighton, Newcastle, Liverpool, Arsenal, Villa, West Ham, have all got to play an extra four games for us. And I do think that this 10-day break will do us a little bit of good. I know Chelsea have got to play midweek, um, but it's, for me, it's about, the players that are potentially carrying a knock, Son and Madison, it's about getting them in fully recovered. Um, and I, I just feel that we're we're in a in a very good spot at the moment. And I want us to keep building from this. Why can't we go and, and keep winning games? We've got winnable games coming up. We've got the likes of, um, you know, Chelsea and um, Chelsea and uh, and Wolves coming up. Tottenham are the 13th side in Premier League history to take 26 points or more for their first 10 games of the season. Um, of the other 12 sides, 11 of them have finished in the top three and half of them went on to win the title. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we're in a in a very, very good position right now. Um, you know, we need to just keep building. Benton Core's back as well. I'm, I'm, I just think we're in a very good spot and we need to just keep this going. Make sure if you haven't already, you've liked the content as well. Um, I'm going to put a transfer video out maybe later on today or early tomorrow. Um, and that's from a report coming out um, from, uh, I believe it's, is it from uh, Sports Pete Zero, who's talking about uh, Stuttgart striker, Suru Gahasi. We've already spoken about him a couple of times on this channel. But yeah, we're in a good spot. I'm happy, loving life at the moment. You know, we're in the best position we've been in in years. And we're only 10 games into our new project of our new manager, playing new new style of football with new players. And we've won 80% of our games, drawing to losing zero. The most points in the league, the best goal difference in the league other than Newcastle. So we're in a good spot right now, guys. And I think we just need to keep this momentum going. Make sure on the way out, you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content. And I will see you all soon. I'm out. <laughs> Oh,